Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite. Tudo bem? Ah, pessoal, muito obrigado pela presença de vocês todos. Meu nome é Jefferson Studs, eu faço parte da Triton South America. E temos aqui hoje um convidado muito especial, provavelmente uma das palestras mais esperadas do ano, Dr. Essan Dasti, o fundador e CEO da Triton Applied Reef Bioscience, uma empresa que vem fazendo grande uh, avanços para o aquarismo marinho. Uh, aqui junto com a gente também está o Julian Badio, recente aquisição do time Triton. Julian? Uh, Julian, 20 anos, biólogo marinho, especialista em uh, é, é, problemas com corais, 20 anos de Cairns Marine e está trazendo todo esse seu conhecimento para dentro da Triton. Fiquem com o Dr. Sandasti, por favor. Vou tentar traduzir um pouco para vocês de tudo isso aqui, para que vocês consigam capturar o máximo de informação possível, ok? Isan, my pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So I have not understand anything. Give me yours. Give me yours. I have uh, sadly not understand too much, but I think it was nice. I think it was nice. Okay. Thanks a lot for inviting me here. I feel very honored um, to be here in Brazil. I try to talk a bit slower. So whenever you have a question, you can just ask. And um, actually, Jefferson will jump in and try to explain it in, um, in uh, Portuguese. Qualquer dúvida que vocês tiverem, mesmo durante a apresentação, vocês podem levantar a mão. Dirija a pergunta em português para mim. Se quiser fazer em inglês, tudo bem, mas vou traduzir para português e o Dr. Essan vai responder. A palestra é rápida, é uma palestra de 25, para a gente ter mais tempo, inclusive, de perguntas e respostas depois, ok? Sim, yeah. we'll, we'll let it flow a bit. Yeah. And, but if there's something important you want to ask, just ask. I don't have a problem with that, ok? Um, afterwards, I hope you have a lot of questions. I wasn't sure about the audience that I have here. So um, I can see a lot of industry people, but I can see a lot of uh, reef keepers here, like hobbies. So I will try to mix that talk up a bit to make it interesting for all of us. Okay? Ele, ele pode ver um público bastante distinto. Alguns de vocês já conhecem como empresários, uh, donos de negócios no aquarismo, uh, e outros provavelmente uh, hobbistas uh, de aquário, aquarismo marinho. Então ele vai tentar adaptar e colocar exatamente questões para tudo, todos os públicos. Excellent. So this talk is about how a company can transform a very old or let's say very traditional um, industry into something very modern. Okay? We have done that over the years, so we're actually trying to explain it, how we did it and what's the difficulties. It's uh, for The aquarist may be very interesting to see the way of Triton over the years, right? And I would say we just started from here. Do you want to actually yeah, translate yeah. it? Uh, essa palestra é exatamente para mostrar como uma companhia pode transformar um hobby que é bastante tradicional, que leva desde suas origens o tradicionalismo de se manter um aquário marinho. Tá? É, basicamente, ele vai mostrar toda a experiência que eles vêm coletando ao longo desses últimos 12 anos, aplicado para o aquarismo atual. Por isso que a palestra se chama Modern Reef Keeping, uh, século 21. Ok, então eu acho que vamos em inglês agora, e quando você tem uma pergunta, você só pergunta, ok? Então, vamos começar. O que significa moderno? Ok, no nosso caso, moderno significa que você deve ir do seu próprio caminho, certo? Então, o que nós fizemos no passado foi fazer uma We try to go our own way to be very innovative. So innovation is one of the main things that industry needs nowadays. Uh, staying with old things is fine, but having new ideas is a very important thing. I'm, I'm going to explain the innovation part in a second. What else is there? Confidence is one of the main things. You need to really believe um, to your own to do these things. You need to know about it. Like you, you should be an aquarist if you want to have an aquarist company, right? You can't just be a chemist and come in and think you are king of um, every coral, right? And another one is um, not to be afraid of change because fear is one of the main things keep people back um, going new ways, right? It's, it's not about other people telling you how to do it. Actually, you should decide for your own. 
Um, what is very important to a modern company also for me is sustainability. You need to think about the environment. You know, we're getting more and more people, so kind of having that in the back is always good. Not only thinking about the money is always the important thing. So in the beginning, I will make that a bit shorter. We started 2008 with the company and we have been the first company to implement laboratory testing into aquarium, into seawater aquariums, right? And we have not tested with ICP back then, we tested with another machine um, for other things too. It was still elements we tested, but not trace elements. Um, and we implemented the first method that is scientific for reef keeping, right? That means that we created a framework to be able to understand the data. I'm not going to dive too deep into this. You can ask me questions afterwards. But it's very important to understand that every aquarium is different, right? A very different. So a lot of people doing a lot of things to filter the aquarium. One put in alcohol or sugar. The other is having an algae. The other have a, having skimmer. So it's very different. The problem is even if you test aquariums, you will have these differences, so you, you don't learn anything, right? But if you can make it work that you have all the aquariums very similar to each other, you can compare them and the data is valuable, right? But I will explain that later if you have questions to that. So the funny thing was for us that when we come up with, with these two new things, 2008, we got a big problem on the research sector. So actually there was no knowledge. We found new things, we measured new parameters like bromide or like fluoride, but there were, nobody knows what to do with it. You know, because our knowledge, everybody knows about nitrate, everybody knows about, you know, calcium, but what about fluoride? Nobody knows. So we needed to do our own science. That's a very important thing to, to a really modern company. You need to have a value and create your own IP. That's what it's called. It's like a, a information that only belongs to your company. If the information is free for everybody, it's you know, not very valuable. But if it's for yourself and you can use it for your customers, it's a very valuable information. So we actually hadn't had any information about that, so we needed to create that information and do read science. We're coming later to this. There was another problem, the industry itself. So when we started, we said we don't do water change, right? So the industry never liked this, right? So they said, oh, wait, we sell a lot of salt. If people don't do water change anymore, we don't sell salt. So the money is gone. So actually, a lot of companies in the business really don't like Triton because we we're kind of teaming up with something that is not money based, right? But later on, you will have more examples about that. A very unexpected one was some of you are hobbyists, right? A lot of hobbyists went against us. So it was a bit strange for us because we said you don't need to do water change and we had an aquarium and we proved that we don't need water change but still a lot of forums a lot of facebook a lot of you know whatsapp groups the people just said oh no no no, no it's not working you're lying you lie to me we need water change and even i never expected that because i thought if you come up with something like that People will like it, but a lot of people actually went against it. So there was something that we never thought would happen, but it actually happens to every company that is going, going new ways. I learned it now. I created also with my company a lamp that we don't have anymore. We sold the lamp, right? But it was the first LED light over aquarium that was proven to work. So we did it the same way we do it with all our products. We prove them on our own before we sell them, right? That's a very important thing. Because if you don't do that, all the people that you sell the product are your, you know, like your, your white little mice in the laboratory. So it's not a good thing to do, right? For us, it's very important to sell something that we, we actually know of it will work. 
again, the industry weren't happy about that, right? LED would work for 10 years. T5 and metal halide would have a better sales. So it was again, somehow against, against the money stream. So everybody was against it. The other guys, the hobby was very, very strange in that point. So a lot of hobbyists came to our facility and looked at the tank and they saw this LED of our aquarium and they just don't believe it. They said, we would take it away in the night and put another lamp on there. This is what they said. But okay, it's up on them, right? Just, just an example. So 2012 was the year where we implemented ICP OES. We were the first ones, we developed it, and we created the method to actually measure. It's very difficult to measure trace elements in seawater. And we created a very, very um, what is it, targeted trace element supplementation. That means that you could the first time not just put in something in your aquarium, you could actually see it. Exactly like you see calcium and alkalinity and you measure and you replace, exactly the same thing you could now do with, with trace elements. Actually, since quite a time now in Brazil too, right? So it was always important for us that the, that the hobbyist understand what he's doing. It's very important because that's success, right? With this, we got a lot of success and we got also a lot of big problems because nobody knows about trace elements, right? Nobody before us could measure them. There is no books written about them. There is no information in forums. Nobody actually knows about them. So we needed to find out for ourselves what is good for an aquarium and what not. How much vanadium is needed? How much vanadium is dangerous? How much beryllium is dangerous? Nobody knows this, right? So we needed to do a lot of science because it was a lot of information that we, we need to kind of cover, a lot of elements that we measure. I needed to do a lot of science to get this information for you guys. And we did it over the last years, right? The industry had a big problem with that because you could actually see what they sell you, right? So a lot of companies sold little bottles and said, look, that's trace element mix. But no one here, before we made it measurable, could ever see that. So you put it in an aquarium, but you never know what is in the bottle. It was just what is written on the bottle, right? But now that's over. You can actually mix it in, send it to us, and you will see what's in the bottle. So sure, the industry, again, was not happy about Triton, right? The hobbyist, again, surprised us in the past, and they, they said, oh, look, we don't need to know. We don't need to test for trace elements. There's, that's making no sense. It was very strange to me. It wasn't a big amount of people doing that, that back then, but they, this argument was there and you needed to kind of go against it. You know. So that said, in 2016, 2016, we brought Core 7, which was the evolution of Barling. Right? Barling was a very working, absolute good method to run a, a reef aquarium, and Core 7 was the evolution. And that was the first time where actually nobody said anything, you know? 2016, nobody, neither the industry or the hobby, was against it. We were very happy, but it took eight years. Eight years it took for an innovative company like us. We did so many innovations in eight years to be accepted in a, in a kind, okay? So whatever you do, even to cats and dogs, and you wanna get an innovative company, that will be a big problem, okay? It's not going to be fast. So that said, after we got accepted, so an, a kind of victory came up, right? So we felt very good with all this. What, what does that mean? So nowadays, we have, um, we really a lot of innovations and, and we are invited in conferences like here. We have testing laboratories around the world and we have distribution in four, four um, uh, continents. And to be honest, the funniest thing we got was that 
we got accepted and as soon as we got accepted we also got copied right so that's the best way to find out that you do the right thing okay because other people do it too um, sometimes people think we are angry about that but we are not at all because we worked eight years to be copied okay that's a really good thing um, a lot of people rushed into it so if you if you imagine since then we created a sales of ICP machines of about 3.3 million dollars Australian dollars okay so it's quite a lot of ICP machines that have been sold so the company that actually sell the ICP machines to us they really love us <laughs> they made a lot of money with us already um, the hobby is already we have 270,000 tests right we have a lot of tests done and this data is actually collected by us and evaluated by a lot of good people like Julian, like Vincent. I'm doing it, my dad is doing it. So it's, it's quite a good database to learn from, right? And the best thing you learn from is aquariums. We have done a lot of tests in seawater, but that's very boring. It's always the same. While aquariums, you will find a lot of extremes, a lot of things that are absolutely not in seawater, right? Hand cream, stuff like people just jump in there or beer whatever you find a lot of things actually um, that said the the biggest victory for us the biggest thing that made us be happy about what we did in the last years was what is the opportunity to do with this right so the first time in reef keeping you could really do science right and what you need for this is a company like us that that you know give the tools but you need way more so for real research that we do you need mobility for example you need big boats we have a good company in Cairns that is our partner we are very proud of that Cairns Marine they collect in a lot of corals and you will see they go on out there with two boats very far and they can collect samples for us and they do we have Guys, one of them is actually Julian, but he is very dark, so you can't see him right now, the right one. Um, we have a big capacity of corals. We have, you know, we can, we live, I live in Cairns, so I can actually have access to all these corals in the facility. And we do read signs, and I want to show you this as a video. Here you go. A lot of people will know the short K coral. It's collected very far at the barrier, very far out. So you need to have a big boat to go there. And the guys that collect our samples in seawater actually collect the coral too. So Cairns Marine, for example, is a diver of Cairns Marine. You can see how much flow there is. And he collects a water sample for us, right? That's the way it works. That's the science we do right now in Cairns. So we collect the, the water sample at the place. And then the diver will cut the coral, which is very difficult. He's having a hard time. You can see that, right? And we know exactly the water that is actually where the coral is coming from, right? It's quite interesting to know. I hope that the video is not cutting out. Yeah. So what is very important to tell you from Cairns Marine Site, they collect wild, but you can see that they leave the whole coral actually there and they just cut a piece. The piece is big enough for an aquarium, but you know they leave the rest of the coral there so the next time they can go there and cut it again. Just by side so we work with very sustainable people what you also can do and that's quite heavy is all this science from seawater is actually going into the aquarium science right we have a very very um, good friend of mine and a very long-term partner that's um, the research in the Horneman Museum Jamie Craigs um, some of you will know him the thing is I've written a, uh, a paper with him and um, that's about coral propagation in aquariums right so Jamie made it possible to get eggs from Acropora right and grow them that's eggs zero days right just fresh eggs same Acropora Acroatinuis that's one day that's a polyp swimming in the water it's Acropora right that is the coral with three months same coral same egg right and that's the coral after one year, okay? You can see it was 2015, right? That's the eggs and that's the coral, 
we grow the coral out of eggs. Not, we not cut at them, right? Nowadays, this is all tried method, right? Nowadays, we cross corals. So we have created corals that are not existing in seawater, right? I don't have pictures of that. That belongs to Jamie for now. But maybe in the next presentation, I will show you some pictures of that, right? And it's very strange because you can cross corals that don't belong to each other, like Millepora and Tinuis, right? It wasn't, wasn't possible before, so it's quite interesting. Um, another thing that I want to tell you about this data is what transformed the industry when you collect data like that, when, you, when you're a company that is modern, you have information that is secret to you, right? So what you need to do is you need to produce on your own. You can't give this information to somebody that produces your product because you will lose the information, right? You need to have a kind of secret to your own company. And to keep this secret, you have other problems that come up. So the next problem is you need to actually produce stuff on your own because you cannot tell and give a recipe to somebody else, right? What is but good, because you have another possibility. If you produce on your own, you can decide to produce sustainable. It's okay, this works, yeah. So we produce in a sustainable way. We dropped all the plastic. So it is actually a, a, a very good move from us, in our opinion, to just try to reduce as much plastic as possible. And that machine is in our headquarter in, in um, Germany, and it's actually made for milk, you know that? But, I mean, you know, if you are innovative, you use what you have. So I, I think the Brazilians are very innovative. They're very creative. So it could be a Brazilian doing that. The thing is that we have reduced our plastic amount 95%, right? So our output of plastic went down 95%. That's really, really a big step for, for going against plastic. So it's not only bad. Another thing that we did is we did a non-profit um, project against cyanide fishing. Cyanide is quite a bad thing. A lot of people in Asia sadly use cyanide to fish, and um, they kill a lot of fish. I have a lot of, you know, um, yeah, a lot of presentations about that. But we we did it with Cans Marine together against something that is very very against the industry. But okay, it's the right thing we think, so we carry on. It's still in the beginning, so let's see where it ends. And. I want to tell you also something about the future. We did endoc testing, that is actually the next step after ICP. So we never stopped doing innovations. We not stopped 2016. So last year, or two, nearly two years ago, we created endoc. And endoc is a testing for the, for the ratios that you have in seawater. And um, we also have written a technical paper. If you want to read it, no problem. Just get an email to our guys here in Brazil and you will get it, possibly in Portuguese, I don't know. But it's in English and German mo in the moment. So what we did is we looked at the red field ratio. A lot of people will possibly know that, right? The red field ratio is an absolute, absolute valid ratio, but it's not valid in aquariums, okay? So it's not valid in aquarium water. It's valid in aquarium animals, but not in the water, right? So if you go for measuring your water, you need to we need not did really a lot. We went there and measured seawater to see what the ratio is, and it just wasn't red field, right? You can read it if you want. So I hope that you understand what I want to tell you is that it's, it's worth doing it. Even it was hard, even it was 12 years of hard work, I think it was worth it because I can see even here in Brazil that a lot of aquariums transforming into the modern into the modern way of reef keeping. I can see a lot of people being more successful, which is very important, you know, so as more successful you guys get, as less we need to take out of the sea. It's a very important thing for us. But, you know, success is what we are doing it for. It's happy, making people happy. So I think if even other companies would do that in other industry branches, would be a good thing. I hope you agree. And if you have question, please go. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Obrigado. Thank you, Sam.